Okay, so here's problem number five. And I don't think we've really done these yet. Um, but it's actually really easy. I know you've done area above and below. And uh, area between a curve and the x-axis is known as distance traveled, right? Maybe total, maybe net. So anyway, this is a graph of velocity. And it's, uh, you know, a turtle's moving to the left and to the right. And something to remember is that when velocity is positive, the object always moves to the right. And when velocity is negative or below the x-axis, it means that uh, the object has moved to the left and it's going to change direction at the zeros of the velocity graph so maybe you know I left my house at time equals zero and I'm driving to school because I'm coming back right and then I said oh no I forgot my lesson plan so I turn around I start headed back home and maybe I stop for a while and then I say I'm too tired to go back to work and then I try again and I don't know other things going on and then anyway I head on back to my house uh, and then I say no you know here it is in my purse I'm gonna head back to school and then off I go again okay so I went from you know uh, going to the school turning around going back home and then going back to school so I'm changing direction at 3 and about 7.5 here so just so you know that so this turtle's moving back and forth and at time equals to zero he's already one foot to the right of this mailbox okay so at time equal to zero, when they started mo monitoring this turtle, he was already a foot to the right in the mailbox. So you got to keep that in mind. So this is A, where is the turtle in relation to the mailbox at t equals to four minutes? Well, easy. I already know he's one foot to the right. And now all I have to do is add up these areas, right? So here's an area of one times two or two. The area of this triangle is one half base. So one half of two is one times the height is 2, so this whole area of this whole triangle here is 2. Now the area of this little triangle is below, right, so we're going to subtract it out, um, and it's 1 half times 1 times 1, so it looks like negative 1 half, right? Think of it, or half below. So what I have is, at, at 3, he's the 1 foot to the right plus 4 feet, so he's already 5 feet to the right of the mailbox there, and then he turns around and starts heading the other direction uh, and so we subtract that out so um, anyway we would say that he's 4.5 feet to the right why because the area above is greater than the area below okay so he's still to the right if, if the area below would be greater than the right then we'd say he's to the left okay where is the turtle in relation to the mailbox at t equals to five minutes again he's already one foot to the right of um, the mailbox at, at t is equal to zero so I don't want to forget about that one foot But anyway we have four feet here and now you know if I compute this area below this is one half times two times two is two right so these two areas here are the same they cancel each other out so two feet plus the one foot is equal to three feet and he's still to the right of the mailbox because there's only area above here. Make sense? Now we have a ladder problem. Okay, so we have a 20 foot, 25 foot ladder sliding down a wall. So I'm just making my triangle right. I know it's going to be a right triangle. Here's my ladder. It's 25 feet long and that, that length is, sorry, that length is not going to change. Okay. And what I know is that the ladder sliding the wall so that the base is moving along the ground at three feet per hour. So I know that dx dt is equal to three. Okay, and it's positive three because the base isn't going in. It would be like the ladder is sliding up the wall or something, I guess. But if we were pushing the bottom in toward the wall, that would be a negative. But it's it's not. This ladder is sliding down the wall, and so this um, right here for x has to be in this direction. Okay. When the ladder is 10 feet from the wall, how fast is the top of the ladder moving along the wall? Okay, so I'm trying to find dy, d, um, dy dt, right, when y is equal to 10. So I know y is equal to 10, I know this is 25, and by Pythagorean theorem I can find the other missing side, right? 
25 squared minus 10 squared. So um, it's what, 525? And that's not a perfect square. So I'm going to let x equal root 525. And I'm just going to leave it like that. And you should too. Okay. So because it's a right triangle, we're going to use the formula x squared plus y squared is equal to 25 squared. This is not, this length will never change. So it's a constant. And now if we differentiate both sides, we're going to have 2xx prime plus 2yy prime is equal to 0, right? And that's 2 times root 525 times x prime is 3 plus 2 times when y is 10 times y prime is equal to 0. So remember, never plug anything in until after you take the derivative except for cones. And the only reason why you're doing that in cones is to get rid of a variable. With ladders, we don't need to do that. Okay, so this is pretty ugly, and the idea is, is that we want to isolate y prime, right? So y prime would equal to negative 6 root 525, I'm writing with a purple pen, over 2 times 10 is 20, right? And if I compute that up, Uh, looks like I'm going to get negative 6.874, uh, and that would be feet per hour. And that's it. So I guess the answer would be B. That one would be B. Alright, number 7. So let me just fix this here because this is a little bit weird the way I've got this thing set up. So we want to use the table to the right to answer the problems. If f is continuous and differentiable, meaning that it's a nice somehow it's some nice smooth curve without any you know points or cusps or corners or breaks or anything like that, there are no holes because it's differentiable, meaning you can take the derivative at every point over its domain, then approximate f prime of 3. Okay, so I don't know what the function is, but if I have a table of values, I know that I can use what we've already learned in chapter 3 to kind of give myself a good approximation because remember, that's what it says, approximate f prime of 3. So I want the derivative of this function right at this point when x is equal to 3. So that's f of 4 minus f of 2. f of 4, remember this is in the middle, so you just go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. f of 4 minus f of 2 over um, 4 minus 2. Well, f of 4 is 5, f of 2 is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, so the answer is 1 half. Okay. They just put the table vertical rather than horizontal, but I think if this were, you know, like this, you would have seen it better. Okay, so here's what we want to the derivative, we want to approximate it at x is equal to 3, so you just, you know, do Make sure this is centered, and you know, four four minus two, uh, f of four minus uh, f of two over four minus two would work perfect. Now number eight's a tough one, so I'm going to do that. It's a tough one because it's a nightmare of a function to put in the calculator. If I recall, I don't know. Let's see. Let's try and do it right now. So. We're given the derivative, so remember this is the derivative of the function that we're given over the interval 0 0.7, so they couldn't have made it any more hellacious. At what value of x is the tangent line to f horizontal? So I want to know when does this derivative equal to 0? Okay, so I'm going to cut this video off here and I'm going to continue on with problem number 8 in the next video.